rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for that deep, intimate time of worship today, Lord. I really felt the power and anointing of your Holy Spirit in your presence with us today, Father. So we honor you, we glorify your name, we adore you, and we yeah. we, we, we just give you the praise today, Father, and thanks and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm just going to uh, adjust here a little bit, and uh, I'm going to ask if anyone else, Reverend Andrew, would, would you like to pray for our online audience? Sure, I can. Okay, you have your microphone. Take it away, and I'll just get this set up here. Sure. Father, we thank you for who you are, Lord God, that you are a good, good Father. Amen. Father, we thank you for everything that you're doing for your sons and your daughters. Father, we thank you that you are taking them to higher heights and deeper depths in you. Yes. Father, I thank you that you are hearing the cries of their heart, Lord God. Yes. That, Father, you are hearing the deep inner cry, Lord God. And, Father, we thank you that you are filling them, Lord God. That you're filling them with your presence and your power. You're filling them, Lord God, with purpose, power, and destiny, Lord God. Father, we thank you that you are filling them, Lord God, to go out like a mighty army that you have yes. called them to be, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Father God, not only in the workplace or not in the pulpit, but, Father God, in our homes and in our communities, Lord. Father, we thank you that you have anointed each and every single one of us, Lord God, with a calling, a purpose, and a destiny, Lord God. And Father, we thank you that we will walk in it, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that the online audience will walk in it, Lord God. That, Father, they will not fear the look of man, nor fear the enemy, but they will have a reverential fear and awe of you. That, Father God, when you say go, they will go. When you say walk, they will walk. When you say run, God, they will run. Father, there is a generation, there are people that are crying out, Lord God. And Father, you have heard their cry. And Father, we ask that you would send out your sons and your daughters who will hearken to your voice, hearken to your word, and say, yes, Lord, I will go. And Father, I thank you that they will bring the glad tidings of the gospel. They will bring the glad tidings that the kingdom of God has come, that Jesus has come and has heard their cry. And Father, we thank Thank you that as you anoint them and send them out just as the disciples were sent out two by two father we ask that you would send them out lord god cover them protect them that father god as they go out lord god father they are not going in their own might but they're going in the power of the holy spirit amen. in jesus name amen. 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 amen 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 praise god so you can all have your seats and the children are welcome to go into the back as we get into the message today I know it's Pentecost Sunday, which in the Hebrew is called Shavuot, the Feast of Shavuot. Um, but I feel like we need to continue on where we left off last weekend. is the message on inner healing and deliverance. And thank you to all the new faces that are here today. Some of you for the first time, and many of you were here last week. And we talked a lot about um, the angels, the demons, you know, um, why we need to be equipped in the spirit to do healing and deliverance. And um, there's so much we covered. We covered on iniquity last week and the importance of dealing with that in the, in the sanctification process. But today I want to take us back to Genesis chapter 6 and I'm going to give you some more mysteries of the Bible. Are you ready for that? Amen. More mysteries of the Bible. And I think you've all heard this word before, but in Genesis chapter 6, it talks about something called the Nephilim. Everyone heard of that before? That's another word for giants. Some people call it the fallen ones or the fallen warriors. 
I'm not being prophetic, but the Raptors are up three games to one against the Warriors. Yes, so we're going to call the fallen Warriors uh, this, uh, this week. Praise God. Okay, get back to Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 says, When the human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Interesting word. For they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. So that's when God changed the lifespan of man from 900 plus years for Adam and, and Methuselah and all the people in the Old Testament uh, before this point lived over, you know, hundreds of years. But because of the sin and iniquity that we talked about last week, God reduced it to 120. So that was a form of judgment. But also, uh, let me back up here. Remember last week I talked about Genesis 1.1? It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so humans had not been created yet, and everything was perfect. And then I, we, we know something happened, and we talked, talked about the fall of Lucifer last week. And I said, God, why is it that today we see so much sin in the world among like us, like humans, I guess you could call us that. And uh, yet, but God is so full of grace and mercy today. But one third of the angels were judged very harshly and severely in, after Genesis 1-1. And I asked God the question, why is that? And then the revelation that came to me is that in heaven, the place where God dwells, there's no sin, no rebellion, no iniquity, no evil, no disobedience. So that's the place we're looking forward to, which we call the third heaven. Amen. Amen. So everything is perfect peace, perfect love, perfect joy. So one sin or iniquity, God had to judge it severely because that is not allowed in heaven. You see the difference? We're living in a fallen world where we see sin all the time. And so we're kind of almost used to it now, right? But in heaven, they were judged so severely because of that one disobedience and act of rebellion. You see that? That's how holy this God is, our God, our Father. He is so holy that you cannot have any transgression, no sin, no iniquity. None of that can exist in heaven. And that's what we have to look, great uh, place to look forward to. Amen? Amen? So there's a song I can only imagine, right? Mercy Me. And they kind of try to get a picture of what is heaven really like. And it's a beautiful song. The movie came out last year and it was a powerful movie. One of the top 10 Christian movies ever uh, out there. And I'm encouraging. But we'll, we'll, we'll play it here in the sanctuary next month. We'll, we'll have a movie night. But it's a great movie about try to imagine what heaven is like and why it's such a beautiful place that if any of the, sorry, none of the angels now are, are they're 100% they're obedient, the two thirds that are still there. But when the one third rebelled, they had to be cast out of heaven. And that's why we have all this stuff that's happening in these mysteries I'm about to get into today called the Nephilim. Verse four says, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, remember that, also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. Now this is a mystery. No one knows 100% or is this really the fallen angels or is it the offspring of the fallen angels? But again, these are the things we have to just know that they're in the word of God and it'll help us when we get into healing and deliverance what we're dealing with, right? Uh, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of human heart was only evil all the time. Can you imagine that? That's like Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Constantly thinking evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. That's the only verse that's a good consolation there. Verse 8, that God is about to wipe out his creation because of of the level of depravity, sin, evil, whatever you want to call it, we had fallen into such a deep state of sin that God is saying, I'm going to wipe it out. But Noah, thank God, found favor in the eyes of God. And so the flood comes, the 40 days, 40 nights of water pouring down. But Noah and his three sons, Ham, Japheth, and Shem, were, and their wives, so eight of them in total, were on the ark. And they were saved because Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And because of that, we the creation continued on afterwards. Amen? Amen? So now we know what we're dealing with. There was, you know, Adam and Eve and their children, Cain, Abel, and then Seth. 
and the whole genealogy all the way to here is 1,500 years of, 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 of uh, genealogy. Then the flood comes. <clears throat> and let's jump now to uh, a, a chapter. Well, okay, let's jump to chapter 8, where the end of the flood. It says, then Noah built an altar. This is after they came off the ark. Noah built an altar to the Lord, taking some of the clean animals and clean birds. He sacrificed burnt offerings on it. So even... There was different animals on, on the ark, but only the clean ones were, were acceptable as a sacrifice to God. That's all how holy God is. We have to keep God in reverence all, at all times. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. So what we see going on in the world today, yes, there's a lot of... Uh, what you could call sin and depravity going on, but God says where sin abounds, grace abounds even greater. Amen? Amen? So God is so full of grace and mercy that he said he will never again destroy the world the way he did the first time. It says, um, as long as the earth endures, verse 22, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. So this is a good... Um, um, Revelation on God's kingdom principles. Seed time, harvest time. And we know that. We're always talking about sowing and reaping, right? God has put this into place in the whole world is under this um, declaration. Because this is God speaking. He's not making a covenant with anyone else yet. He's just speaking this over Noah and his three sons. And do you know that all the world are descendants of either Ham, Japheth, or Shem? Yeah. So we all have a common ancestor, which is Noah. Because everyone was dis destroyed, even the Nephilim were all destroyed because of the flood. Um, but remember what it says about the Nephilim, that they would also appear again after. And that's important because there's spirits. When you kill a person, sorry to say it that way, but I mean when a person dies, the spirit does not die. You cannot kill a spirit, right? That's why we have to understand deliverance and how to bind spirits, how to cast them out. Why did Jesus cast them into the pigs and they all ran and drowned, right? Because Jesus, and they said, have you come to destroy us before our time? So they know they're going to end up in the lake of fire, but there's a time for it. And even Jesus, the son of God, did not send them into the fire, lake of fire yet because that'll come still in the future. So in the meantime, because we're in a place where we need to know how to bind or, or, or cast out, or number one is identify. We need to understand the rules of engagement in the spirit, how to pray effectively and deal with changing our atmosphere. So I'm going to talk about the Nephilim spirit because a lot of people believe that demons are the spirits of the Nephilim. Some people believe demons are the fallen angels. It could be a combination of both. It could be one or the other. It doesn't really matter. Some say it's the spirits from the pre-Adamic age, and I'm not even going to go there today. I'm just trying to tell you that we know that there's spirits and demons and angels, right, which we've been talking about. So we know how to empower our angels by declaring the word of God, and we need to know how to eradicate or get rid of demons. And, and Jesus said, that, <clears throat> repent for the kingdom of God has come near. And he says, by the finger of God, he will cast out demons, right? And he's delegated that authority to us. So today I'm finishing up on inner healing and deliverance, but I'm mostly focusing in on deliverance and why we need to know the power and the anointing we have to take authority over the demonic world. Is that, is that, a, is that a good, uh, how can I say, does that make you feel good that you have power over the, the spirit realm? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God, because God has delegated that to his apostles, prophets, and really anyone who's born again of the spirit. That's why today's Pentecost Sunday. But I'm not going to preach on that because we can save that for next week. I feel like many of us are already baptized in the Holy Spirit. But we still need to be trained now and equipped on how do I actually, yes, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living in me. But what do I do with it? How do I actually cast out demons? Well, number one is you need to identify how can you discern. Remember in our leadership program, we're talking about discernment. How do you discern what spirits are operating in an environment? I can go to different parts of Toronto and I'll tell you what's operating in different parts of the city. But again, you need to have the discernment to know and prayer intercession is very important in that area. Let me just finish by saying that God made a covenant with Noah in, in chapter 9, which is the Noah covenant. And I believe the whole world is blessed because of this Noah covenant. But what's even better is that the new covenant God made because of his son, Jesus Christ. That now is a, a blood covenant. The rainbow represents the Noah covenant, but the blood of Jesus represents the new covenant. And because of that shed blood of the Messiah, the Son of God, we can now become children of God. So that's a greater covenant. Praise the Lord. 
This was a good one, but God gave us an even better one. Amen. Praise God for the blood of Jesus. There's more I was going to talk about there, but let's just jump because I want to get to the main message today on uh, Ezekiel chapter 32. I'm going back to the prophets now because remember I said the word of God is like a puzzle. You have to start in Genesis and then you're like, okay, it only mentions Nephilim once and then you don't hear about it anymore. But now you got to go to the prophets to give us more revelation. What does it mean? So Ezekiel, powerful man of God. We studied last week on Ezekiel, I think it was 28. What does he say in verse 27? Does anyone have the other microphone? Ezekiel 20, sorry, 32, chapter 32, verse 27. Is anybody there? <laughs> if you're there, say amen. Amen. Okay, give him the mic. <laughs> He's fast. <laughs> Hallelujah. What does 27 say, uh, Jason? 32, 27? Yes. But they do not lie with the fallen warriors of old who went down to the realm of the dead with their weapons of war, their swords placed under their heads and their shields resting on their bones. Though these warriors also had terrorized the land of the living. Okay, let's stop there for a minute. I know you need to read the whole chapter sometimes to get the full context, but I just want to show that he's re referencing or referring to the fallen warriors of old. So those are the Nephilim. And, and you'll see it again in Numbers 13. So now let's back up a little. I should have did Numbers 13 first, but Numbers 13 will show us again why does the Bible tell us in different scriptures about these giants or these Nephilim. There's a reason why. Numbers 13, verse 33, first person who says amen can read it. Amen. <laughs> I'll, I'll just do it. Okay. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. I, I, I kind of jumped too far ahead. I wanted to give, give you the context. The context is, is Moses sends the 12 spies into the promised land, right? This is during the 40-year wilderness experience. They're, they cross the Red Sea. They're on their way to the promised land. But... They don't know how they're going to conquer, right? So Moses sends out the 12 spies. Ten of them came back with what? A bad report. But who were the two good spies? Joshua <laughs> or, and Caleb. Yeah, Joshua and Caleb. Praise God. They were so confident. And this is how you can tell who has truly the anointing and the spirit of God. Because they don't care if there's giants in the land. They said, yes, we can take them, right? Mm -hmm. King David, he was the same way. He had the spirit and anointing of God. So let me just back up here to verse 27 and give you the context. It says, they gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. So they did bring some fruit back from the promised land. It says, but the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We, we even saw descendants of Anak there. So that's how you know that the Nephilim are truly descendants of Anak. You saw it in Ezekiel, and it talks about it again here. Um, the Amalekites live in the... Okay, so let me skip that. Verse 30 says, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Can you imagine the confidence Caleb had? He says, oh, We can easily take them, no problem, right? And so again, you need the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Even today... You can't go into, you know, the GTA, which is the greater Toronto area or a, a big major city like that and try to preach the gospel without the anointing because there's powers and principalities everywhere. And, you know, you need to, you can only cast out demons by the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? So you need to be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. And now you're equipped to go out. Why is that important? We talked about this Friday night when Jesus resurrected, he breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit, right? So they had the Holy Spirit, but what did he tell them to do next? Go and wait in Jerusalem until you're endued with the power from on high. So there had to become a there had to be the day of Pentecost, the day where they were baptized fully in the Holy Spirit, and now they went out and they transformed the whole world. Why? Because they were baptized and equipped by the Holy Spirit. So do you see the difference? You can be saved, but not yet equipped to go out and fulfill the calling or the commission of God. 
Uh, I, I don't know why someone online had to hear that today because it is Pentecost Sunday and I feel we're going to give you a chance at the end when we pray to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and that's your calling moment. That's your commissioning moment because again, I don't want you to go out you know, knocking on doors and doing things led by the wrong spirit, right? If you have the Holy Spirit, you'll be successful. Otherwise, you're going to be beaten up in the spirit because the demon... Okay, I'm going to get to it later but you'll see that in the New Testament there was... A group of Jewish exorcists. Do you know what they were called? In the book of Acts. They were called the sons of Sceva. Seven of them. We're going to get there. And they were trying to cast out demons. In the name of Jesus. Whom Paul preaches. So can you imagine? They, didn't, they weren't preaching Jesus. But they thought that was a formula that worked for Paul. So it would work for them. And the man got up and beat him up. All seven sons. And so that tells you that you cannot go. And try to cast out demons in your own strength. Or in the Jesus that Paul preaches. You have to have the spirit of Christ in you. And then you can cast them out. Amen. Yeah. The demons know. The demons know. That's why I'm saying about the rules of engagement in the spirit. If you try to attack demons and cast them out. And you're not anointed to do that. Or you're not prepared. Or whatever the situation is. They're going to either laugh at you. Or they're, they're not good. It, it, how can I say? The legal right has to be destroyed or removed. And that comes to repentance. Which is another message for another day. Let me get back to... Numbers chapter 30. So we know who the Nephilim are now. They were uh, the descendants of Anak. And they were giants living in the promised land. So let's jump to Numbers. Sorry, sorry. Um, let's jump to Joshua now. Because remember after Moses handed over to Joshua. He handed over the reins to Joshua. Remember, Moses did not even enter into the promised land. But thank God for Joshua. That in verse 11, Joshua verse 11, he took over and led the, the Israelites into the promised land. In, in verse 21, it says, At that time Joshua went and destroyed the Anakites from the hill country, from, from Hebron, Debir, and Anab, from all the hill country of Judah, and from all the hill country of Israel. Joshua totally destroyed them and their towns. No Anakites were left in Israel. Sorry, in Israelite territory. Only in Gaza, Gath and Ashdod did any survive. So see, some of them still survived, but they were out in Gaza and, and outside of the main uh, uh, Israelite territory. Isn't that powerful? So Joshua had a warrior spirit. Well, he had the Holy Spirit, but he was a warrior. <laughs> Let me put it that way. And so Joshua and Caleb were the ones that had the... Uh, uh, um, confidence and determination that yes we can take over the promised land and they did it and now let's just see joshua 15 i'm giving you a lot of scriptures today but joshua 15 verse 13 and 14 says in accordance with the lord's command to him joshua gave to caleb son of jephune a portion in judah that is hebron arba was the forefather of anak so again it gives us more information on the on the genealogy of of the, the nephilim it comes from arba uh, the forefather anak some people say the mother of goliath was orpah but let me I'm, I'm jumping ahead let me finish verse 14 from hebron caleb drove out the three anakites um the sons of anak and, and if you read through this, you'll see that there was more, there was there was different names given to, uh, uh, not only Goliath was one of the descendants of the Nephilim, but there's other names given here. So let me jump to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 17. I hope I got it right. 2 or 1 Samuel 17. Sorry, first first Samuel seventeen four. Is anyone there? First Samuel seventeen four. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits in a span. Does anyone know how tall that is? That's like nine or ten feet tall. So he he would be a good NBA player, but. <laughs> uh, and he had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. And on his legs, he wore bronze greaves 
and a bronze javelin was slung in his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod, and his iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Wow, so Goliath was a huge giant, but we know that what we talked about, everyone has a vulnerability, right? Or a weakness, and we saw it in, in um, Lucifer who fell out of heaven because of his weakness of iniquity found in him. We see it in even all the characters of the Bible, like Saul, King Saul had a weakness, and because of that, he fell. God, he fell from God's grace. And David, King David took over. Even King David, anointed man after God's own heart, had his own weakness. And we know about that later. But here, he said that he was able to kill a bear and a lion to protect the sheep as a shepherd boy. And can you imagine this little shepherd boy, David, is coming to this tall nine, ten foot armor, full of armor, Goliath. And he knew he was going down. My question is, did he hear from God ahead of time where to hit the, like where to aim the stone? Or did he just go by faith and say, okay, God, I'm gonna just sling my stone and you you knock him down. But he knew that his weakness was right there between his two eyes. There's armor all around him, but he got him right in his vulnerable place and the giant fell. And it doesn't say what happened to the armor bearer, but David took his own sword, cut off his head, and all the Philistines ran off. Why? Because Goliath represented sort of the power or principality for all the Philistines. Once you knock down the leader, everyone's going to flee because they said, wow, a greater authority and power has come. Amen. So that's what King David, he represented the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And because of that, he was able to, de to defeat Goliath. But why did he have five stones? Everyone ever ask that question? He only, he only took one stone to knock out Goliath. But let's turn to uh, 2 Samuel 21, and this might help us solve this mystery. There's different revelations. I always believed it was the full counsel of God, the fivefold ministry. He was going in the full power of God, but he only needed one stone to knock him out. But uh, 2 Samuel 21, verse 15 to 22 says, Once there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel, David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines, and he became exhausted. And Ishbi Benob, one of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 shekels and who was armed with a new sword, said he would kill David. But Abishai, son of Zeruah, so I like some difficult names here, came to David's rescue. He struck the Philistines down and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, Never again will you go out to us, will go out with us to battle so that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. Anyway, can you see that this was another giant? So Goliath was the first one, but here was the second one who was, it was not David who killed the second giant. It was one of his uh, uh, mighty men of valor. In verse 18, it says, In the course of time, there was another battle with the Philistines at Gob. At that time, Sibichai, the Hushethite, killed Saph, one of the descendants of Rapha. Now, Rapha is another descendant of Anak. So again, you're, you're hearing all these names, and you're wondering, what is the link or tie? This is why you have to do a deeper study to realize that Anak is a descendant of King uh, of Goliath, and so and also of Rapha. And another battle with the Philistines. You notice they're all called Philistines, right? Uh, Elhanah, son of Jer, the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath. See, uh, Goliath had a brother, the Gittite. That's another word for them, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. So you see, they say that uh, uh, Goliath had either four brothers or four relatives. So David went with five stones because he was going to kill all five of them, but he only had to get kill Goliath and the others fled away. But later on in the chapter, you see that they had to deal with the other four. So you see what the, this, the situation here is like you have to completely finish the work in order to have total victory. But they got it here. It says in verse 20, in still another battle which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in all. Have, have you ever heard of this mystery in the Bible? This was a giant with six fingers and six toes. So six times four is how much here is 24 in all. So he had four extra, two extra fingers, two extra toes. Wow. He was also descended from Rapha. Uh, when he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shimei, David's brother, killed him. These four were descendants of Rapha in Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. So you see that four descendants? 
So the first stone David used to take out Goliath and the other four stones he had in reserve, but the other four descendants were taken care of right here. So I don't know, hopefully that answers a mystery for someone, but I, I just want to sure, show us what we're dealing with in, in the spirit realm and even in the physical. If you're going to get into deliverance, we need to know this stuff because then how are you going to fight a battle when you don't even know who you're fighting against, right? So hopefully this is equipping us to dig deeper into the word of God and to know the truth because that truth will give you the anointing and, and the power to you know, expose all lies, all deception. And, and the, the demons know when they see a true man of God, an anointed man of God coming, they're, they're going to flee because they're scared of the truth, right? They know you can expose them very easily. But they try to hide through lies and deception. Now let me just jump to 1 Chronicles 20 verse 4 to 8 is just a repetition of what I just read in 2 Samuel. And so again, the Bible confirms things in many different books very often. But let's jump to now the New Testament. We still have time. Praise God. Is everyone enjoying the message today? Amen. <laughs> we, I really enjoyed worship more than anything today. But I feel like we need to spend time in the Word of God. So let's go to Acts chapter 19. And while we're going there, there was another powerful Israelite in the Old Testament by the name of Samson. Samson was a very powerful, he had a supernatural strength, let me put it that way, su superhuman strength. And it doesn't say that he was a big giant, but he had more power than even the giants because he killed, I think it was a thousand Philistines with the, uh, the jawbone of a donkey. Imagine a thousand, he killed a thousand men by himself single-handedly. And he also he killed a bear in a line, just like King David, right? So Samson is another person in the Old Testament who had great physical power, supernatural physical power. And it's not because of his size, it was because of the Spirit of God operating in him, right? And, um, and he was one of the judges of Israel. But what was his weakness? His weakness was, does anyone know? Delilah. Delilah, right. <laughs> and he had another wife, and, and, and anyway, it, it was lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh, which the Bible warns us against. So more power, more purity means more power. We talked about that before. But if you're going to go into a battle, you have to be accountable to someone because, you know, that's why I believe Jesus sent them out two by two, right? Because there's wisdom. I can't see my blind spots, but if I have another you know, partner, they can tell me, watch out, you know, there's something you need to deal with. So again, it's wisdom that we need to stick together in unity and, we, and teamwork is more powerful. So we, what I see with Samson, he was like kind of a lone ranger. He never had anyone telling him, you know, you need to repent or you need to, you know, get rid of that sin out of your life because that was his downfall in the end, right? And uh, so everyone has a weakness or vulnerability and it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that you can truly succeed and fulfill God's plan and purpose. So what does Acts chapter 19 tell us? And because of Pentecost Sunday, which um, I keep bringing up, I'm going to start at verse 1 to sh share a revelation here how you can be a believer and not yet baptized in the Spirit. Verse 19 says, while, uh, verse 1, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. Now, Ephesus, we all heard about the church, the Ephesian church, where Timothy was uh, supposedly a pastor or an overseer there. Um, that was one of the seven churches in Revelation, right? And that's in modern-day Turkey. They don't exist anymore, these churches, but all of these churches were in modern-day Turkey. And it says, there he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? What a question is that? Can you imagine going up to a believer and say, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And most people will say yes. But in this case, the answer was no. They didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. So this is my challenge to you. If someone says, yes, I'm saved, but are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? That's another question we need to ask. So their answer was no. We have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. And sometimes I wonder if even churches today, we hardly hear them preaching about the Holy Spirit or about the gifts of the Spirit. So what, is it a religious belief they're believing or is it a religious spirit? What is it they're following if they don't have the Holy Spirit? Because, you know, there should be power in anointing. There should be a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit is truly present and operating, right? And again, I'm not trying to judge or criticize other uh, congregations, but I'm saying you can see in some places the Holy Spirit is not even honored or even talked about. 
So that's, and if you don't even believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that's another big problem because how can you cast out demons? How can you do the work of the kingdom of God if you don't have the Holy Spirit? So again, I won't mention any names or denominations, but I'm just throwing that out there to think about this very carefully. That you cannot do the work of God effectively or properly without the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I think we got that point. <laughs> we drilled it home today. Amen. Okay. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? Verse 3. John's baptism, they reply. And Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Remember, that's the water baptism. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is in Jesus, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. And they were 12 men in all. Now that's significant. I, you know, 12 is, is, a, is a, a number which has great significance. But the fact that Paul laid his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came on them. And what did they do? They spoke in tongues and prophesied. So those are signs. Um, Help me here. What, uh, um, it's a sign that you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're going to start speaking in tongues or prophesying. And then Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly, spoke boldly there for three months. Verse 8, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. So do you see the message Apostle Paul brought? He was baptized in the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 9. He was going around persecuting Christians. Suddenly, he got physically blinded by the light. And then Ananias came and laid his hands on him. The scales fell off Apostle Paul's eyes and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And did you see the transformation? So when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, there should be a before and an after picture of you, right? <laughs> you can see that, you know, there should be a radical, what do you call it? A radical change. And sometimes it happens quickly, but sometimes it's more gradual. But you should be able to look at your life before you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then a few years later, or five or ten years later and say, yeah, that was really a defining moment in my life. My life totally, radically changed at that point, right? Amen. Total turnaround? Yes. Extreme makeover? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so where are we here? Verse, uh, um, let me just jump down now because we see uh, Paul entering the synagogue and he, and he was preaching the way. It was called the way or the kingdom of God. And uh, in verse 11, it says, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even the handkerchiefs and aprons that touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. So you see here that the, in this chapter of Acts, it's connecting sickness and illness with evil spirits. It's not always the case, but in this case, evil spirits did leave when the anointing on the aprons and handkerchief touch the people. So that goes to show you the mystery of how the, the, the spirit realm works. When you have the spirit of God, even if it's in a cloth like a handkerchief, you know, if there's a true power and anointing on it, the evil spirits will flee from that. It's like King David playing the harp, right? Or the lyre. He, he, uh, the, the, king, the, the demons that were um, tormenting King Saul, they would take off because they can't, couldn't stand the anointing coming from King David's harp or lyre. So you see music, music is very anointed and powerful to cast out demons, right? So is the spoken word. Jesus used the spoken word. He didn't throw holy water on him, but even though I'm not going to say anything against that, but it's not biblical, right? Biblical is if you cast out demons, you have the power through your spoken word to cast them out. Jesus said, be quiet, be silent, and come out. Amen? Okay, so, so here Paul is doing extraordinary miracles. He even raised the dead. Him and Peter were the only two apostles who raised the dead in the New Testament. But sicknesses, they were healing all manner of sickness and diseases. And we already covered this last two weeks ago where we said that there's different strongholds in the spirit realm. And spirit of infirmity is one of those, right? And under the spirit of infirmity, you have all types of sickness and disease. So when we're casting out sickness or disease, we bind the spirit of infirmity and we cast out that's the, the, the head what do you call it, the head on show, and then all the ones are underlying spirits, right? Once he casts out the leader of that stronghold, then everything else has to go as well. So that's what we're dealing with when we're dealing with certain types of sickness and illness. Not all. Some are physical, some are spiritual. That's why you need the sermon of the Holy Spirit to know this, is the person deficient in some nutrition or does we have to cast out a spirit infirmity. You need to hear from the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important to be led by the Spirit in every situation. Okay. 
I'm almost done here, but I want to show you what happened in verse 13. It says, Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed or oppressed. They would say, In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. So, so Sceva is the name of the Jewish chief priest, and he had seven sons who were all trained up to go out and be delivered. Well, it calls them exorcists. Really, deliverance ministers is what we is the term we use today. But exorcist is someone who casts out evil spirits, right? It says, one day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I know about, but who are you? <laughs> so that's what the demons are, are going to try to shame you, right? And they're saying, then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. So how is it possible that one, I don't know if it was an old man or just that one man could beat up seven other men. Because it's not the spirit who, the spirit spoke, but it was the man who physically beat him. You see that? So he had some kind of demonic power that he was able to beat up seven sons of Sceva. I mean... It's just crazy, but that just goes to show you that when you're dealing in the spirit realm, you have to have the power and anointing of God. Otherwise, the demons will make a, um, they call it a spectacle of you. Anyway, Father, thank you for your power, your grace, and your anointing today. And then verse 17, it says, When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. So to see why God, why did God allow this? Because once this happened, now they said, wow. We thought we knew how to do the exorcism or deliverance, but now we know there's power, greater, higher power in the name of Jesus, right? And his name was held in high honor. And it says, many of those who believe now came and openly confessed what they had done. So this is revival breaking out right here because of this one thing that God allowed. Suddenly everyone became fearful and said, my God, this is the true son of God is, is, is the Messiah. It says, the number who, who, sorry, a number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. Can you imagine? This is what I call revival, is the, the occultists and the sorcerers and the, and the psychics and whatever you want to call it, tarot card readers. They all came and brought their stuff and started burning it because they're saying, this is rubbish. It's of no use to us. We found a greater power. Amen? Amen? So that's what we need today. We need people to be convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit yes. where the psychic shops will start to close down Amen. and get rid of burn all the books. Let's have a big bonfire. <laughs> we'll, go up, we'll go up to George, uh, sorry, Orangeville and have a big bonfire yes. Yes. With, with all this uh, stuff that people are selling yes. you know, because uh, they think there's some kind of power in witchcraft and all that stuff, but it's going to take you straight to hell. Amen. So you might as well repent now. And get on the right side where we can have eternal life in heaven and you can have the true power of God operating in your life. Amen. Now finally it says, when they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. I don't even know how much a drachma is, but that's your homework for today is, can you tell us how much 50,000 drachmas is? But that's a lot of books and scrolls that they're burning because of this one act that apostle, you know, that happened here. It says, in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. Sometimes God allows persecution to come just because he wants revival to break out or he'll allow uh, just one of these types of situations where suddenly people are repenting, turning from their sin, getting born again. And that's the goal here is we want true revival. In verse 21, after all this had happened, Paul decided to go to, to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. After I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. He sent two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, to Macedonia while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. Praise God. So this was called Asia Minor, but it, it, the revival broke out powerfully. And then there was a riot in Ephesus in the rest of the chapter. That's another powerful story for another time. But I just want to leave time for prayer today. And so, Father, we thank you for everyone watching online, Father God, that they're being touched by the Word of God today and by the fire of the Holy Spirit. And, Father God, whatever needs there are, I ask for the gifts of prophecy to come alive, the Word of knowledge to come alive, be activated, Father God, and help us to pray specifically for everyone here in the sanctuary or watching online by the Word of knowledge. I give you praise and glory and honor, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Is anyone getting a Word of knowledge for anyone online or anyone here? You just wait a few minutes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> Praise God. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to pray general prayer for everyone watching before we go offline with the camera, and then we have more time. But I know that last week we spent a lot of time after ministering to people here in the sanctuary. And all I could say is for the people that are online, um, if you're in the GTA, make an effort to come here so we can pray for you. And I always have my anointing oil here so we can <laughs> lay hands and anoint you. I believe in the uh, anointing with oil. And, um, and when the healing anointing is flowing, sometimes when we turn the camera off, it starts to really just God moves powerfully. But I thank you, Father, for everyone watching online. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before we go offline, we're going to pray for baptism, the Holy Spirit in general, for everyone watching online. But I feel that we're still waiting. There's someone who needs to hear a specific word. Father, I give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. We humble ourselves before you today, Father God. And we ask, Father God, that you move powerfully by your spirit as we come before you, Lord God, as children in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. Show yourself powerful, mighty, and strong today, Father God, to bring healing, deliverance, and salvation to everyone watching today. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All I'm getting right now is that if someone is experiencing some problems in your eyes, um, I'm just going to ask you to put your hand over your eyes and just believe by faith that Thank you, Lord God, for activating this healing flow, healing anointing, Lord God. We send forth your word for healing, Lord God. Touch those eyes. Sanctify them, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Bring total healing by your stripes. They are healed and made whole. I loose you from all pain, all infirmity, and, and anything that is not of God. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. Heal uh, people from many cataracts today, Father God. Perfect vision to be restored now in your holy name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That I believe that was for physical healing in your eyes, but it could also be the spiritual vision. Praise God. God's going to give you vision to start, you know, uh, identifying what your purpose is and you will go forward and fulfill your calling and destiny. Thank you, Father. We know we have a lot of believers and loyal people watching online. And, and so I believe that was also for those that you need to write down the vision of what God is calling you to do. Thank you, Lord God. Habakkuk says, write down the vision. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. And as you keep focusing in on your vision, meditating on your vision of what God is calling you to do, you will fulfill and accomplish it. Thank you, Lord God. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You have to meditate daily on the word of God and you will see great results in your life. Those that know their God should do great and mighty exploits. Do you have a word? Praise God. Amen. In ourselves? Yes. In each, like each other? Yes. In the ministries? I'm not going to say churches, because sure. it's ministries, but yes. there's going to be a revival. I don't, I like to keep hearing from the Holy Spirit. Revival is going to break out. Praise God. It break out individually. Hallelujah. Just in people's lives. Yes. In the Christian world. Yes. Christ, among Christians, the revival is going to break out. Right. That's what I'm getting. Praise God. Praise God. I, I believe you all heard that on the camera, but revival is going to break out. First, personally among ourselves. And then uh, corporately, let's put it that way, corporately in the body of Christ. Thank you, Father God, that all those just ignite a fire, Lord God, in the people watching today. And everyone here in the sanctuary, ignite a fire in this, Lord God, that, that will not uh, be diminished, but will burn bright and, and greater. Thank you. I see a flame of fire now, Lord God, burning bright inside our spirit, soul, and body. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, intensify the fire, Lord God. Intensify your power and your anointing, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. There will always be fire. Fire on the altar. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Fire on the altar will be burning day and night. Hallelujah, Lord God. We'll be like a flame of fire for you, Lord, like the seraphim, Lord. They are the burning ones, Father God. They're the angels burning by the throne room of God. Thank you, Lord God. Ignite us like the seraphim burning ones, Father, to fulfill your purpose and, and, and plans and purpose here upon the earth, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Would you like to pray before we go offline, Reverend Andrea? Sure, just you can do a general <laughs> prayer and then um, we'll, we'll continue here with some worship in the sanctuary. Do you have the microphone back there? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes the word of knowledge comes once you open up your mouth to start praying, then it starts to flow. So you just got to take that step of faith. 
if you want to praise well, Monica, I'll call you up next if you like. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that it has held and will continue to hold, Lord God, as we go into the evening. And Father, we know halfway around the world right now it's morning in some places, God. Father, we ask that you would bless your sons and your daughters. That, Father, as they forge ahead, Lord God, Father, we thank you that you are strengthening, strengthening them. That, Father, they are moving, Lord God, like an army. And that is what I see, Lord God. I see an army moving in sync, Lord God, moving forward in you, Lord Jesus Christ. And, Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's like I can hear the marching, Lord. Father, I thank you that they picked up their marching orders. That, Lord, as you have commanded them, Lord God, Father, they are going out in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that, Father God, they're not going out alone, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Father God, they are going out with other soldiers, but more than anything, they are going out with their commander and chief, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, just as you were with David, Lord God. You said that he would recover all. And Father, I thank you for your word that your sons and your daughters who have lost things, Lord God, shall recover all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that just as Job lost everything, but he would not curse you, Lord God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that they shall receive double, Lord God, for everything in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We decree it, we declare it, we prophesy it, we quicken it, we call it to life by the blood, by the word, and by the spirit. We have spoken it and it cannot be otherwise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Would you like to praise well, Monica? Sure. Okay. Hallelujah. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. Pray for everyone online. Amen. Amen. So thank you for the opportunity to share with God's people. So Lord, I just come before you, Father, and in my spirit during worship, Father, I heard you say, enlarged territories. Enlarged territories. Father, I thank you right now, Father, for your word says that what you say will come to pass and shall not be mocked. I thank you, Father God, in your name, Lord, that wherever anyone is right now, that are able to hear with their ears and able to see with their eyes, and Father, able to speak with their mouth, that they are not like carbon images or idols or things that they look to, Father, but Lord, they know that they can call on a Father who is real, who is here with them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come against every single principality that's coming against anyone's home around the world. Father God, I thank you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that your word shall come to pass. I thank you, Father God, that in the name of Jesus, all of these astrologers, psychics, that they call themselves gurus, they call themselves all kind of names to fancy it up, Lord, it's all fake. I thank you in the name of Jesus that we come against, Father God, all these demonic forces that are taking over people's homes. Father, I speak to every single nation that's listening right now where you are. I tell you right now, I was from an Eastern faith. I tell you right now that I used to believe, as the word says, that those who believe in those carbon images, the ones that made them and the one that worship them are just as idle as those idols. They have eyes but can't see. They have ears but can't hear. And they have a mouth but they cannot speak. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for your revival. I thank you for your light that has come into the darkness. And the darkness must run. I thank you, Father God, that we have been consumed with the fire of God in our heart. I thank you right now, Lord, for the enlarged territories. Each person, Father God, sitting right here is a jewel. Each person, when you look across and when you're looking at me and I'm looking at you and you're believing in Jesus, you are a jewel. You are a ruby and an onyx and a pearl. You are a sapphire. You are not supposed to be like someone else. You're not supposed to be like each other, but you're supposed to belong. You're supposed to belong to the family of God. Whatsoever has happened in your past, I've come to tell you. I am a mouthpiece of God and I will say to all who are listening, Jesus loves you. He has mandated a purpose for you in his heart. He has thought about you every second of every day. Before the foundations of this earth, I thank you, Father God, that you had each one of us in mind. I thank you, Father God, for the people who are sitting here and who are listening. And those that are creating those carbon images and those who are worshiping them, Lord, bring them into your light. 
Father God, we knock those things down, Father God. We call those things that are not as though they were. And we thank you right now that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. And that Word took on flesh. And His name is Jesus Christ. And He lives. I thank you that you created the heavens. And you created the earth. And before all of it, your Holy Spirit was hovering, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for your Word. That nothing could come against that love. Lord, all of your believers, if you believe in Jesus Christ, I will tell you right now. They don't come against you. All these principalities and demons, when they fire their darts at you, I'll tell you something right now. The word says that the blood protects. That that cross, that cross was just a tree, but it became anointed with the blood. When that blood bled on that tree, that cross, anything that tries to come at you will touch the blood first. And when it touches the blood, it will dissolve in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for enlarged territories again in my spirit. I thank you, Father God, for the consuming fire, for the revival. Lord, we keep all the people who are watching right now. I, Father God, come before you, and I thank you for them. Anything that you have been facing, Father God, I thank you that you have put a period to their past at the end of that sentence. And you have started a new book. A new book, Father God, and I just thank you for the consuming fire, the revival, that your word shall not be mocked. That, Father God, you are bringing in and ushering a new thing. And, Father God, I also thank you for this. In Joshua 1 9, you had commanded him to be strong in the Lord. Father God, we thank you that you have commanded us to be strong in you. Anything that is coming up this week, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We win. Father, we win. We win. We are prosperous. We win. We victorious. We win. We are, we are stomped on the head of the enemy. The only thing he sees is our shoe. In the name of Jesus, you go back to hell, plunder back to hell, Satan. And we thank you, Father God, for all that you have done today and all that you are doing in this service. Father God, we bless the leaders. We bless the people watching, Father God, in your mighty name. And we thank you, Father God, that you have let loose. You have let loose your word to come against any type of demonic attack. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Just give it, hand it over to the next person because we're on fire today. And that just goes to show you when you have the Holy Spirit moving through many people, the teamwork is is the is where the power is, right? Yeah, it takes the pressure off any one person because you see everybody is just moving powerfully. I'm going to call maybe two more people to pray if you'd like. But I, I, I feel that the revelation I was, I was getting about teamwork yeah. Is I always use sports as an analogy, but like you know, you have Christian Ronaldo, one of the best soccer players in the world. He's so good, but he was not able to take his team, Portugal, to the World Cup finals last year or whatever the last World Cup was. And that goes to show you that it has to be teamwork. You cannot have one player bring the whole team. St Stephen Curry, a very good basketball player, uh, but it doesn't seem like one person is enough to take the Raptors on this year because they have a, a team of many players that are all scoring and putting points on. You see the, the, the power of teamwork? Um, Amelia, would you like to pray? It's up to you. I'm just asking. <laughs> and then I'm going to ask Pastor Jude if you'd like to pray as well, and we'll end it up. Because uh, I feel... Online? you want, Would you like to? Online, yes. Yes. It's up to you. Yes. Praise God. Yeah, I, ju I just want to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for everyone watching, if, if that's okay. Is that yeah. a good prayer point for you? Where's the other mic, Andrew? Right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay, we'll take that one. Thank you. So get ready for the fire of the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, as Amelia prays another powerful Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your people, oh God, who are watching online, God. Oh Lord, Father, touch. Give your Father God. Everyone, oh God, that is watching, Father God, and seeking your face, oh God, who are hungry for you, oh God. Fill them up, oh God, right now with your love. Fill them up, oh God, oh Lord, Father God. Oh Lord, with everything that you have, oh God, from the heavens, oh God. Touch them tonight. Touch them this morning, God. Wherever, oh God, Father God, the nations, it's different time, oh God. It may be nighttime, it may be morning, oh God. It may be noontime, oh God. But I don't care, God. You are God, oh Lord, who's able to touch, oh God. Oh Lord, everyone, oh God, for it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord. Baptize them, oh God. Oh Lord, with fire, God. Fire, 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 oh God, that cannot be shut, oh God. Father God, the fire, oh God, that cannot be quenched, oh God. The fire, oh God, oh Lord, oh God, that will move, oh God. Father, everyone, oh God, to bring souls to your kingdom. Lord, that will transform their lives, oh God. Fire, oh God, that will burn Burns the wicked and preserves the righteous. It burns anything that is not of you, O 
fire. Lord, oh God. God, I feel the fire is burning now. And, and anyone else want to pray before we call on Pastor Jude? Anyone else feel that? Shokorobo Sunday. Thank you, Father God. More power, more anointing. Would you like to say a word? Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this is the day that you may go rejoice and be glad in it. We cover this place with the blood of Jesus, Lord, from the front to the back. We cover all our homes with the blood of Jesus from the front to the back. We cover our cars from the front bumper to the back bumper. Give us traveling mercies, Lord. We put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, the boots of peace and the armor of faithfulness and no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that rises will be condemned to not in Jesus name. Lord, we pray for divine grace, divine mercy, divine opportunities, divine relationships and divine time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bind and break, rebuke, loosen and arrest every demonic spirit, every witchcraft prayer, anyone who's praying against your saints, against your daughter's and sons, Lord, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. We bind, break, rebuke, loosen, and arrest. And we break every type of voodoo, witchcraft, any occult, any type of witchcraft, any prayer that is being prayed, any altar that is being built against your sons and daughters in the name of Jesus. Any assignment of the enemy that is coming against your sons and daughters and everything that they have to do. In the name of Jesus, we come against and any demonic spirit that is assigned against your son and daughters. Lord, we pray that you put a hedge of protection. We pray for an obstacle and a hindrance. We send it to the pit of hell and desolation right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We dispatch our warring angels and our guarding angels to go, go forth and fight every attack of the enemy right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we, we cover our minds, our subconscious mind, emotion, thoughts, willpower under the subjection of the Holy Spirit and under the blood of Jesus. Lord, we come, we ask that altars will be broken. Any pictures that were taken, our pictures that were put from our parents, anyone who's doing any type of voodoo or witchcraft, we break it right now in the name of Jesus. Anyone who's coming and doing anything against, we... Stop it right now. We decree and declare it. It will not touch us. It will have no effect over us. We cancel. We void it. And we nullify it right now. Any witchcraft that is coming against us. And also it will get against your children online. In the name of Jesus. We are victorious. We are overcomers today, Lord. And we can do all things through you who strengthen us, Lord. And the joy of the Lord is our strength today, Lord. Lord, I pray for higher height and deeper depths. Yes. We decree and declare that this year, 2019, and is accelerated growth Amen. and a breakthrough year. Yes. And Lord, revival yes. will break out in Praise us, throughout Amen. Toronto, Amen. and throughout the community, Amen. throughout the world. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you're going to break it out. Your word said you 
said, Lord, Holy Spirit, that there's going to be revival. Break, revival is going to break out in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, I pray every prayer that people are praying, every desire will be fulfilled and will be met. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for obedience. Thank you as we re as we dig deeper in your word, that re revelation, signs, wonders, and miracles will be revealed to us yes. through your word, Lord. Yes, Lord, I pray that anybody who's blinded, anybody who has blinders on their eyes, that you open their eyes, yes. reveal, uncover, and expose yes. the truth, the and let them see the real truth, yes. Lord, through your word, through your spirit, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord, for what you're about to do, Lord. Yes. Thank you for a hedge of protection. Thank you for our angels. Thank you for every prayer that is being prayed today, Lord. There will be a sweet-smelling incense to your nostrils in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah for my for the for our body of Christ, for the leaders, for everybody that is here online and in the body of Christ, that we work together, that you bring unity among the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We come against the spirit of jealousy, competitiveness, Amen. and feeling intimidated. There is no competition in the body of Christ. Amen, yeah. But we are all a body. We work together as a team. Yes. We work together as unity, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we come together and that there will be the fruit of the Spirit in us. Amen. Amen. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, humbleness. In the name of Jesus, we'll walk in the Spirit and not the flesh. Yes. Today, we, today we crucify the flesh and walk in the Spirit. Yes. In the name yes. of Jesus, let us hide behind the cross yes. and let people see Jesus through us. We are ambassadors. We are influencers. We are trendsetters. As we go out, we people will see Jesus through us. We are the only Jesus that people will see. And use our mouths with the spirit of boldness to declare and decree and give the news, good news of you, Lord. Amen. This week and wherever we go, Lord, that you will ignite fire in us. Amen. Every gift, talents, and abilities is being ignited. And you're going to use us. Every purpose, destiny will be fulfilled in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray for salvation. We pray for souls. We decree and declare that this place is a hospital. It's a holy ground. And when people walk in this place, they'll come in one way, but they will leave another way. In the name of Jesus, healing, deliverance will take place, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Bina. Wow, perfect love casts out all fear, and we're just, we have a lot of prayer power in the sanctuary today, and it's, it's such a blessing. My God, thank you, Father, Amen. for what you did today, Lord God. It was very unexpected because we didn't know how the service would go, but I felt like for so long we had to just pray, 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 and that's one of the keys for revival. Also, the worship and the Word of God, we're combining all the ingredients together to really, you know, uh, uh, move forward in this revival we're believing for. By faith. Uh, uh, Pastor Jude, I want to thank you so much for coming today. Would you like to close us in prayer today? Sure. Was there anyone else I missed? Are you okay for next time? Or I have a word. I don't know. Um, quickly come up. Quickly yeah. come up. Yep. If you have a word there. And then Pastor Jude, you're going to close us in prayer. Is that okay? Sure. Amen. Amen. This is a... Uh, where's the other mic? Oh, oh sorry. That's okay. You got it. Okay. <laughs> it's a word. Go ahead. Come on up. Yep. Amen. So I've been reading uh, Genesis and God spoke to me through uh, this part here about Joseph. Uh, so I'll just read two sections and uh, go from there. God bless you too. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one, the one you sold to Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives Amen. that God sent me ahead of you. Amen. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you Amen. and remnant, re, and, sorry. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. And there's just one more section here. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, 
but God intended it for good Amen. to accomplish Amen. what is now being Amen. done, the Amen. saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. So what God had told me here is you may be in an uncomfortable spot in your life and not understand as Joseph was. Uh, but it's not about our purpose or our works. I believe that sometimes we're in a place where we don't understand. But God uses that and he does show his glory later as he did with Joseph. And uh, he basically use that whole scenario to save lives and to provide uh, for his family after and and basically um, if you're in a place where you feel like you're uncomfortable right now just trust in God and he's going to use that and he's going to shine his glory and when you look back you will understand why you were there yes. and uh, I want to leave that with you guys today thank you God bless you and may your week be blessed amen. thank you amen amen, amen. amen. Thank, thank you man of God amen. Praise the Lord. That, that that's awesome. This is revival where you know the where, whether it's prayer or the word of God, I can listen to the word of God all day and I feel this is what we want. We just want to release the gifts of the spirit and uh, the revelation that God has given to us. So I'm feeling great about today. I'm gonna to ask on Pastor Jude to just come and close the service in prayer. If you would like to um, support us uh, or sow into the ministry. Um, for those online, go to www.thirdheaven.org. We'll type it in the comments later. You can also, through PayPal, um, send a donation to um, worship at thirdheaven.org. Thirdheaven you can tell I don't take care of too much of the administration. <laughs> right okay. Uh, for those in the sanctuary, there should be envelopes, and we'll pray over the offering at the end. But come on up, Pastor Jude, and just do a closing prayer. But whatever you feel led. Take it away, and this has been an awesome service so far, so I praise God for that. Hallelujah. 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 As um, people were sharing, I perceived in my spirit that one of the things that delay our miracles, hindering us from being where we're supposed to be, is unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Both here and those online. I'm not being able to walk in love. The Bible says, if you hide iniquity in your heart, God will not hear you. Yeah. Pray from here, Genesis to Revelation. The Bible says your prayer is abomination. So for us to do what God has called us to do, it's important we sanctify ourselves. Amen. Amen. Yes. Mm. It says, let your light shine so bright that people will see your good works and God will be glorified. How will be God glorified when our voice, our thoughts are unsanctified, unholy? So it's my prayer that God will open our eyes so that we'll be able to know when to say, when to talk, when not to talk. Because the enemy doesn't care how much you go to church. What the enemy cares is when you start practicing the word of God. Amen. Yeah. As we pray, let's Purpose in our heart to practice what we have. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Yes. Amen. Father in heaven, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the unchangeable change, the untouchable touch, he that begins and finishes. Amen. Father, as we have got that, Father, we fought the world. Even those who are online, even though now we are up the line, but the Spirit of God can touch them no matter where they are, in the north, in the south, east and west. Father, Father, as we have come, oh God Almighty, touch us so that we can touch us in the name of Jesus. Father, the areas that we have fought in, Father, through our words, our actions, not doing what we're supposed to do, doing things, we're not supposed to. Oh God Almighty, I pray that you by your spirit will cook in us in such a way that the Holy Spirit of God, the image of God, the nature of God, the ability of God, the essence of God will do that which 
only God can do. And the angels, according to Psalm 91, that has been given charge over us, will guide us in such a way that we will be able to go the extra mile. Father, that the spirit of humility, meekness, love, O oh God Almighty, will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Father, help us to know how to communicate yes, with one yes, another. Yes, yes. Help us how to relate to one another, oh God Almighty, because the Bible says that uh, we are in a war. Yes, yes, yes. And it's not against flesh and blood. Yes, yes. It's not against um, spouses, um, husband or wife, children, and parents, employee, employers. But it's against principalities, against powers, that Father, let our eyes of understanding be lighted so that we'll be able to put them where they belong. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of anger. Yeah. You know what happened. Yeah. What happened to you know, my brother, Jesus Christ, make sure you open your body, destroy your works. Anxiety, back and go in the name of in Jesus. Jesus. Unforgiveness, back and go in the name, name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Man. Father, you said your word will never go back to you for it. Man, but yes. it will accomplish where it is sent. Therefore, we are sending them now, Man, Father, to all our well wishes, our loved ones. Man, Father, Jesus. in such a way that Father, testimony will be told yes. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, let every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that steps into this place not go without encountering your presence in such a way father they walk as you walked in the name of jesus father help us to understand how to walk in love and in forgiveness touch us touch us even tonight let them sleep tonight and wake up refreshed energized and changed forever this and more us. And everybody that believe in that prayer says, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Wow. God bless you, Pastor Jude. Hallelujah. Let's, let's give the Lord a round of applause for the good today. And um, it's so amazing when I see the Holy Spirit move like that because I um, had a book here that I was going to talk about, but, and I didn't, I didn't even know Pastor Jude was going to come and he was going to bring up the thing about forgiveness. But it's the healing ministry book. And one of the very first things when we get into inner healing and deliverance is forgiveness. So it's just amazing that you brought that up. We'll cover this next week or in two weeks' time because we do have a guest speaker next week for Father's Day special service. Uh, but forgiveness is so important. And I just want to make that. That was a revelation for sure. And we'll talk about that book in a few weeks' time. We're going to do communion when we go offline. Are we still online, Andrew? We're still God online. bless you all. We love you. And uh, Monday night is... Um, prayer here from 7 to 9 voices for Voices of the Nations and I might show the Raptors game at 9 o'clock, I'm not sure <laughs> we have this big screen here but we're going to go into a time of worship here, so uh, goodbye to everyone online, oh by the way, are we still on Andrea, online? Friday night is our leadership training here in the sanctuary and some of you have heard about uh, uh, street preacher, Pastor Jonathan uh, Lynn will be here David Jonathan Lynn will be here on Friday night uh, eight eight o'clock or roughly eight, eight to nine o'clock Friday night we'll we'll be here and um, Wednesday night is um, torrential rain worship night six to eight p.m. So much is happening we need to have it all written down but keep keep we'll keep up with uh, our Facebook Third Heavens group God bless you love you and we'll see you next week Amen. Amen. Amen.